Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to be doing is taking a look at the crystal block and how to generate crystals like in 1.17 I think it is. I get lost with the updates but so we're going to be doing something that grows basically crystals like this. It's the best that I could actually do. It's pretty much the exact same mechanics. Uh, probably some minor differences with the, the way that it grows, but I'm not that skilled with the part where it, it has to determine which side and stuff like that. It's probably more random, but I haven't figured that part out yet. But we will head over here and it doesn't matter what biome it's in or anything like that. It's just uh, a single block that if we place down, uh, over time, what will happen is it will start to grow crystals starting with the top block. And as you can see, it placed a crystal on the top here. And then I'll place one at the bottom if there's room. So it's basically testing if there's air in that location. And there's air on both sides here, actually on all six sides. So it'll start placing them on, others, on the other sides now as well. So as you can see, one's over here, and those two are growing, and there should be one that gets placed, I think, at the back here, maybe? Yeah, at the back here, and then it'll switch sides between those two. So that's basically how it works. Go into, we'll give ourselves a pickaxe first, and if we go into survival, there is also a drop count. So if we mine something like this, you get obviously a little bit less than what you would get from a harvested version and yeah there's, it's just basically drops an item and those items will grow back over time if there's spots as you can see up here that are already starting to grow back so let's hop into M Crater. it's actually very simple to set up it's mostly block state so let's head over there okay now this is going to be probably a little bit of a longer tutorial so i'm going to try to skip past a lot of the unimportant parts like building the procedures and stuff like that I always provide the actual procedures in the workspace itself so you guys can always download that if you want to and if not then I'm sorry I just I can't be bothered to do an, an instructive video of exact building of the procedure itself. So with that being said I'll cover the settings of the blocks that's the most crucial part for the tutorial anyways. The procedure you can just download from the files that I provide in the workspace. So with that being said let's go and cover some of the stuff. So we're gonna need five textures for blocks. We need our stage one, stage two, stage three, and then stage four crystal particular ones and then we need a block crystal texture for the actual block that it grows on and then we're going to need one item texture for our item that we're basically dropping for a gemstone. After that you're also going to need four models. I'll make sure to provide that in the workspace files as well. Then after you have, all, have that all set up you're ready to go. Now one thing to note is stage zero should be stage zero texture, stage one should be stage one and so on. So moving on to blocks what we have here is we have our crystals block which is the block that it generates from and then we have our stages right here and our item we also have two procedures for update tick so we'll cover that in just a second what we need to do is we're going to start with our blocks we'll get those all built up first and then what we'll do is i'll cover the procedures afterward for the crystal block it's just using a regular block there's no custom models or anything like that so all this all these settings are exactly the same as default the gui name is the name that basically you can give it it's just the display name of the item i've set the material to pack dice the creative inventory to building blocks and the sound to glass the rest of the properties i think are out the same outside of the slipperiness i've set that to i think pack ice and nothing else is out of the ordinary except i have set the drop item amount to zero and the tool able to destroy is a pickaxe but we've also set the harvest level to negative one so it should not be able to be broken after that we're setting the timer to or the tick rate to 20. This will allow us to work with our timers a little bit more efficiency so we can basically count things as seconds, not as ticks. So there's 20 ticks in a second. So anything that we set with our growth timer will be under tick or seconds. The block on color map is ice. You can change this to whatever you want. And there is nothing else important under this particular page. We need to enable tile entity and then we need to disable the slots. So we'll set this to zero and then we need to disable these two 
check boxes here. There's no fluid or energy storage, and there's only one update tick for this particular block. We'll cover that in a little bit. For generation, there's nothing. So moving on, we have the other states. Now I've basically named our, our last state just the ice crystal, and the block is ice crystals. So for the ice crystal, that should be the easier name for it to being displayed and also the default item that would be or default block that would be able to be shown the other states are relevant really but they start from zero one and two and this will be technically three so we'll start with our third state first because that's the one i started with it's using a particle texture for our texture of our block it's a crystal stage We've set the rotation to player side, north up, or pardon me, down up, north, south, west, east. So all those, and that's running on player side. The transparency type is cut out and the it does have transparent parts. These are the settings that I have for the, the boundary box. If you want to copy that, that's fine. The name and GUI is ice crystal and the material is set to stone because we need, we're going to need that to determine what type of tool that can harvest the level of it. After that, what we are doing is we are making sure that it doesn't spawn on a creative tab and then we're setting the material to or the block sound to glass. It also has a slipperiness of packed ice, I believe. You can d just leave that if you don't want to. The default is 0 0.6, which is just a regular block. Resistance and this should be the same. We have enabled it so you can walk through the block as well. That's important. We have set the drop amount for this particular item to four items for our item that we basically specified later on. The creative item pick item is basically the same item as our gem and and our tool is a pickaxe. We've set the harvest level to one, which is a stone pickaxe. Moving on to advanced properties, we've all, we have also set the tick rate to 20. We've set the block color on map to ice, and there is nothing else here that needs to be configured. We've also enabled tick update, and we've basically set no inventory and disabled these two block or check boxes. There's no fluid or energy storage, and we only have one update per procedure which should be the crystal one right here now I updated to the latest version and this procedure got disabled for some reason when I'm editing it so you might want to double check your procedures after editing just to make sure that they're all configured properly and after that we have no generation so lastly for the item what I've basically done is just created a really simple item just for the gem. I have the texture here and then we have just set the item GUI name. All these other properties are pretty much default. The inventory doesn't have one and item or triggers there's none as well so that it's probably the easiest part of this particular tutorial. Now going back to our ice crystals block uh, we have an update tick here. What this is doing is it's basically testing for the side. I'm not going to go into details how to build it, but I will provide the download for every procedure in this particular tutorial from my Google Documents download for this particular project. The project will also be in the, linked to the project page in the description so you guys can grab the, the script that I've used here. What's happening is we're running it on server side. We're then setting a growth timer. This will be measured in seconds. So every second, this timer will be increasing by one. Then we're setting a random local random number, which we need to create a local variable here before you actually import the, the actual procedure. So make sure you have one local variable. I've set this one to random number so you can use the same name. And then what we're doing is we're testing for so we've created an if statement to test if the growth timer is equal to or greater than 10, which is 10 seconds. You can set this number to a higher number if you want it to basically take longer to grow. Then what we're doing is we're testing for the random number if it's equal to or greater than 0.25. And we're also testing if the block at that particular side, so in our case, this is the top location. Uh, if the top is top of the block, the block adjacent above 
above the block is set to air or cave air. And then if that if these conditions are true, what we're doing is we're replacing that block and we're setting the, the block above and we're basically adding the first stage of our crystal. Now that happens for every particular side of the block. After that, what we're doing is we're also setting the rotation of that block so it's facing downwards. Then we're resetting the growth timer. Same thing goes for the downside, which is basically the exact same thing. We're just testing for a different location, which is Y negative one. And the rotation or rotation of the block after it's being placed is set to up. For north, what we're doing is we're setting it the rotation to south and we're setting it to Z negative one. For south, what we're doing is we're setting it to Z positive one and then we're setting it the facing direction to north. For west, what we're doing is we're setting the X negative one and setting the rotation to east. And then for east, the X positive one and then setting the rotation of the block to west. That's basically, that's all that's happening here. It's just really repetitive. It's doing each individual side. So I'll make sure to provide the procedure for this in the workspace as well. The other procedure that we have is for our crystal blocks. Uh, like I said before, each one of these blocks have the same procedure. So it's all linked to the update tick. And what that is doing is it's basically doing almost the exact same thing. It's testing if the it's on the server side or then setting the growth timer to the growth timer plus one. This will run every second. Then what we're doing is we're setting a random local random number. So again, we're gonna need another local number before you actually import this procedure. Then what you're doing is you're basically testing if for several or for three different things, but we'll cover one at a time. The first thing that we're testing for is where growth timer is equal to or greater than our time. Now you can set this to a higher number if you want it to go slower for, or basically take longer to grow. And then our next condition is we're testing for if the block is currently the first stage of our crystals. If that's true, then what we're doing is we're testing if the local number is equal to or greater than 0 0.25. If that's true, then we're replacing the block and we're keeping the, the state as well as the MBT inventory. So make sure this is enabled as well. And we're just basically placing down our second stage. After that, what we're doing is we're resetting the timer like we did in the other procedure as well. And we're doing that for our second stage and our third stage as well. And for our second stage, we're replacing it into our third stage. Our third stage, we're replacing it into our fourth stage. And that's all there is this particular procedure. Other than that, uh, that's all there is. I'll make sure to provide the workspace, the textures, and the actual procedures as well in the download for on my Google Docs. You, the project page will go to my website and then you can download it, go to the Google Docs page from there. Outside of that, that's all there is to it. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.